I know, I effed up. I kept leaking the IP of the server and tons and tons of people joined and it got really out of hand. So I decided to change the IP address. However, this did not stop them. They are still coming and now I'm trying to hide from them. Look what they did to my lovely spawn place. All my chests and loot are gone. My bed is gone and they keep mocking me with these signs. And over here in my base, my animals are gone. My beautiful trees and decorations are gone. And they even stole my beehives. On the other hand, there are tons of awesome builds now. What the heck is this? An ender pearl teleport service? And over here, this is the best thing on the server. This is so awesome. This is an item sorter and storage system. I always wanted to have this and so I'm very happy this was built. I believe it was by Sebastian. Thank you. Oh, wait, I cannot find the items I put into it. Okay, I guess it looks like the sorter is broken again. Let's go investigate. How does it even work? So from the chest, the items go into the dropper and the items get passed along. Let's try to follow this path and find where they ended up. All of these chests and hoppers are empty, but this looks like a dropper elevator. Using the redstone texture pack, we can figure out the orientation and indeed they point upwards. So the items are probably transported up. Looking around a bit more, I come across this card and in the chest above it, there are the items. It looks like this card is stuck. So maybe that is why the sorter is not working anymore. Destroying the card and placing it again, now it's moving again and the sorter appears working. Hmm, it did stand on an activator rail, so somehow it didn't get a signal. So maybe we just have to make sure it can be activated. Oh, and look at that, somebody already added a button to do exactly that. I see. And you know what? Let's extend this debug button to the front so the card can be more easily reset. I built a basic line of redstone with inverters that basically act as extension and then outside we place a button and a sign to tell people they can press it if the sorter appears stuck again. Awesome. Also, by the way, very nice stone floor design and some nice plants there. I really like this kind of design. Anyway, let's explore a bit more. Flying up to my old AFK farm spot, we can find tons of more signs. It's so crazy. And look at the incredible live overflow logo in the sky. No clue who built it, but it's amazing. Remember, this server is all survival. Yes, people can hack and cheat on here, but still, it's still lots of effort that goes into this and I really, really appreciate that. But now we come to the most crazy build of all. Do you recognize this? This is the spawn. This is the forest where I had built the bedrock hole with a spawn protected perimeter. Some people had messed with it with lava cast, but look how it looks now. I did not build this. I did not put a house and a lake there. And the red concrete is actually a pixelated version of my glitched recording logo. This is absolutely incredible. I watched them build this. At first they had to clean up the spawn from the leftover lava cast. I was traveling at the time and only had my MacBook with me, so the recording is terrible, but they started by flinging TNT into the build protected area with fishing rods and then they started to build flying machines outside the perimeter, which then fly in, pick up bad blocks and fly them out on the other side. It's crazy. But they didn't stop there. Some player used the flying and pushing machines to build a jumping challenge course above it with the concrete colored blocks. And then look at the footage of the house getting built. What a crazy dedication. Think about this. In this area, the simplest, most basic Minecraft task of placing a block becomes a complete engineering challenge. It's incredible. Just look at the effort that went into this. And of course, the spawn was completed with a trans and rainbow flag. You know, the internet is a toxic place, anarchy servers and other social places without any rules quickly fall into complete Nazi racist shit show. but look at this. This server is a server project where I try to attract skilled people and there are no anti-griefing plugins, no real rules and yes of course we have some griefing but overall it's a very positive community that formed on here and dominates the server. Of course, this might change at some point and then maybe I will also take the server down, but regardless of what happens in the future, up until this point, I will remember the server as an example where when you gather a bunch of super smart people and skilled hackers, you get an amazing place. It doesn't immediately fall into absolute chaos. And I think that's beautiful. But you know what? Before everything turns sour on here, let's probably finish this game. 
let's go to the end and defeat the final boss of Minecraft. To get there, we have to find a stronghold. How do we find it? Well, this is a server for hackers. Of course, we just fly to the coordinates 1337 1337. What did you expect? Trust me, that's how it works. So here we are, 1337, 1337, and of course others have been here before me. So the stronghold has to be somewhere nearby. I'm using a free cam mod because I'm too lazy to develop it myself and so here we have it. And oh my god, I just realized I forgot the eye of endos for the portal. So I had to fly back. I checked the solder where luckily I found tons of ender pearls, but I still needed some blaze rods. Which means we need to go to the nether. So let's cheat. I went to the seed map from chunk base, entered the server seed and looked for a stronghold. This one seems close by. Let's go there. While I travel there to find blazes for some rods, I briefly want to mention how I got a seed with a stronghold near 1337 1337. You know, when I saw the chunk base website, I was wondering how they get such a fast map and structure rendering. I know from the seed cracking episode how computationally expensive world generation can be, so this really impressed me. How is that done? I started to investigate and eventually stumbled over Cubiums, which is a C implementation of the world generation, which can be used to brute force seeds. So for this series, I wanted to find a seed where a large variety of biomes, as well as all possible structures, are as close as possible to spawn. And I want a text seed that starts with life overflow. And additionally, I want a stronghold near 1337, 1337. So I let this code run for a few days and eventually I selected a nice seed which ended up to be the seed of this world. So now you know why the seed had these weird numbers. I was brute forcing seeds for a particular pattern. Anyway, small detour, but we are back with the Eye of Enders and we can finally light the portal. So are you ready? Welcome to my tutorial on how to defeat the final level of Minecraft. Let's head in. As you can see, I came prepared. Most importantly are the water buckets because look at how many enemies there are. They are all scared of water, so you can place two water sources on the floor and start fighting all of them. There will be quite a few waves of these monsters, but you just have to keep fighting. Hopefully you brought enough food with you. This is a very tough and long fight. Believe me, it can take a while. But eventually, there, there's the final boss. Herobrine, let's go and attack. Attack! Hmm, okay, give me a second. Something is weird. Let me check the Minecraft wiki. Once the player enters the end, the only way back is to die or defeat the Ender Dragon? The dragon spawns naturally and flies around above the 10 towers of obsidian arranged in a circle around the central exit portal, destroying the crystals while the dragon is healing damages the dragon. There is supposed to be a dragon? Where is the dragon? I see. The dragon is missing because other players have completed the dragon fight before me. Who do they think they are? Script kiddies with their worst or meteor clients. They just downloaded somewhere. They can't even write a single line of code for their own hacks. These losers ruin my game. This has to end. And you know what? Remember all the AFK bots standing around at spawn? They are awesome. They don't do anything. They don't ruin anything. They just stand there. They can stay. But all the human players? Get them out of here. Let's write an anti-human plugin for the server. The idea I have is that humans move in weird ways, while bots and machines, they always walk in a nice straight line. So how about we restrict the movement to very cleanly rounded values, none of this human imprecision. But I don't know how to develop a server plugin, so let's figure out how that works. As always, YouTube is a great place. I simply search for an example plugin development tutorial, but I'm mainly interested how to get a development environment set up. And essentially, I ended up installing the IntelliJ Minecraft plugin, and then when you create a new project, you can choose, for example, to create a bucket or paper server plugin. From the basic example plugin tutorial, I also learned that you can subscribe to events. And looking through the API documentation about the available events, I found the player move event. Using grep.app, I can then search again for useful code snippets to learn how to implement that event handler. In my case, I look for examples implementing the player move event. Eventually, I ended up with this code. If the position of the player changed, I get the current location, get the X and Z coordinate, multiply the coordinate by 1000 and cast it to a long. And then I use modulo 10 to basically check the last digit. So is the last digit a zero? If both coordinates are not a zero, we detect a human player and we kick them. I hope that works. Let's see it in action. 
So if we stand still, nothing happens, but as soon as we move, we get kicked. Human player detected and a code snippet that shows what the failed check was. Nice. You know, while we are at it, how do server plugins even work? Let me quickly summarize what we generally learned about servers so far. Minecraft has an official server, but as you know, most people run a different server implementation. I, for example, use Paper, and we learned that Paper, as well as all the other servers, are basically patching the source code of Minecraft. And to get the source code, they decompile the official server jar. And you can guess it, plugin support is added by patching those servers. So look again at our code when we are creating a listener. This listener is registered with the server. And somehow when a player moves, our function on player move is called, where it passes in a player move event. Let's try to find where that happens. Here I have a paper server development setup, which we used before to figure out a bypass for the flying detection or how the creeper AI works. So let's use this again and simply search for the player move event. And look here. Here is a server game packet listener creating this event object. When we go there, we actually find a massive function which is called handle move player. So this is the Minecraft function that is called when a player sends a movement packet to the server. Here it does a lot of checks and you can also see sometimes comments like these, craft bucket or paper. These are code modifications added by for example bucket or paper and to make that clear they also added such a comment. And somewhere deep in that function, we have this player move event code. So here, a new player move event object is created with a reference to the current player and the from and to location. And then it calls into the current plugin manager and calls that event. If we look up an implementation of the call event code, we can, for example, find the simple plugin manager, which simply loops over the list of all registered listeners. Now it makes sense, right? In our plugin code, we registered a listener, so it gets added to a listener list. And then here, it loops over this list, checks if the plugin of that listener is currently enabled, and then tries to call the event handler function of that plugin. And that's how our function gets called. We get the player and the position in our plugin code. Cool. I hope this explanation for server plugins helps you to better understand the limitations of plugins and also why plugins work the way they do. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with the plugin now. It should really help to clean up the server from all the script kitties, but I also need a bypass for myself to continue playing. So I will have to write some code now. But for a while, this is the end for script kitties on the server. And for those that still seek a challenge, try to find the spot where hackers gather. <laughs>